Welcome to Squatch DTV, where the truth is first before all else. Join your hosts, veteran investigator, TV personality, and author Steve Culls, and from the Kentucky Bigfoot Research Project and the Kentucky Fried Fixes Channel, Chris Bennett. Sit back and prepare to take yourself on a journey with the longest-running Bigfoot podcast, Squatch DTV. Here are your hosts, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch D TV for today's date, April 7th, 2024. I'm your host, your guide to Squatch Detective Steve Calls, along with my co host right down there, Mr. Chris Bennett. Hello, Chris. How you doing down there? Steve, it's good to see you, man. I'll tell you what, we've had some nice weather today down here. We've yeah, but I, I, I really think tomorrow is going to eclipse everything. It could. Uh, <laughs> That's a dark thought, but it might happen. You know, I, you know. Somehow, I think the lights are just going to go out tomorrow. Well, I, I don't know. You know, uh, that is pretty neat. The, the the eclipse thing, and I was checking the path, and unfortunately, I am not going to be in the path for a total eclipse. And I really hate that because I, I really wanted to see it get dark at about you know, one one. I don't know, one fifty eight. PM, I think is what's going to happen around here, but it's so, okay. It'll, it'll it'll just get a little dim, but not well. Completely. Well, there there's plenty of ways to watch it, Chris. You can always, you know, get up on the computer over there in Kentucky and watch it online. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, get the squirrel in the cage and let him run. Get the get the internet working. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I, I would have to drive a couple of hours north to get a, a good view of the. the but you know what? I'm just not that excited about it to do that. I might step outside and watch everything dim out a little bit, but that's okay. That's enough for me. And, and you know what happens? Somewhere, you know, somewhere, mm. somebody has no clue what's going on. They're going to walk out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. All right, anyway. All right, we've had a lot of... All right, hold on a second. I, get, I, I, I just saw something uh, in the chat. I don't know. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. Oh, well. We'll catch up with everybody in a minute. But uh, what what do we get? And we want to say hi to our guest down there from Bexar Bigfoot, Mr. Rod Nichols. Hello, sir. How you doing, man? How you doing? Bexar County Bigfoot. And yeah. uh, we're going to have a great conversation. Again, it's always fun to talk about Texas. We have uh, we have a bunch of good friends down in Texas. We uh, know Jeff Stewart, the Crypto Hulk, um, Mike Waldy from the Texas Bigfoot Rangers, mm -hmm. and uh, so and Craig Wolheater uh, over there on the east side, over there in Jefferson. So yeah, Mr. Craig. So uh, uh, love Texas. Texas. You know, back in the late eight or no, the mid eighteen hundreds, half the Bennett family stayed here in Kentucky. The other half went to Texas. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Love Texas. So um I, I do have one announcement tonight, Chris. And I did say that in my yeah, adverts man. that I do have a special announcement tonight. And I want to apologize uh, for Friday night's Bigfoot news. I, I didn't mean to be as profane as I was, but and I know y'all are gonna say it's okay, you're entitled, and I, and I get that, but Sometimes I have to rise above that to be professional. And, hmm. you know, I kind of led from the heart last Friday. So, again, my apologies for that. But that doesn't mean it's over. Because my other announcement is, is Tuesday morning, we're going to be putting the final nail in the coffin of the RMSO and the hoaxer Kelly Shaw. And we will, we will, uh, we, we have the receipts. Just the facts. We, and uh, <laughs> it'll be in a just the facts format. <clears throat> no and opinion, think, just the facts. Yeah. And I, well, you know, I, I think there's a little fun with it too. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a little mm -hmm. fun with it. But uh, you know, so be on the lookout for that this Tuesday. And uh, you know, this will give him plenty of warning to just keep his eye out for it too. Cause I know he's probably out there lurking in the chat right now. But unlike me. Draw's not stuck in my head. 
Remember, after all, he considers me trying to be the moral compass. When did I ever say that, Chris? Well, I don't know that you've said that as much as you've demonstrated it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never meant to be like this no, big no, moral no, compass. No. I just call it like I see it for crying right, out Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Calling out hoaxes when you, when you see them. Yep. What's wrong with that? And I just have this little little skill set, uh, being an investigator for as long as I have to dig a little bit and and look, come at a problem from a different angle yeah. than a lot of other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But well, to me, I think Friday's not Friday's Bigfoot news was maybe got a little bit negative, but uh, it was it was well deserved. You know, I mean, uh, you yep. you were you were fighting off some some bad information there, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I kind of understand it. And yeah, I know you were a little red faced. I was having a bad day too to begin with. Well, you know. Well, I've been having a bad I've been having a bad month with this neck. And my God, you know, yesterday. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, uh, uh yesterday I had a horrible spasm and today it's kind of a little cranky. Mm. But luck- luckily I go to the chiropractor tomorrow, so hopefully I'll be feeling much better Tuesday. He's good. he's gonna realign you. Yep. <laughs> well, Rod, I don't know if you know, but I got smacked by a tractor trailer uh, twice uh, a couple of, uh, about a month ago. Oh, wow. Backed into oh, me. Once wasn't uh, enough. Let's, let's get him twice. And it, was, <laughs> wow. it, it was really the second time that got me because I wasn't expecting him to hit me a second time, but he just kept wow. on going. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's right. terrible. That yeah, is terrible. So, yeah. so I've, I've been sitting home all month. Wow. But... Anyway, I digress. Let's get into ooh, look at that. Uh, let's get into uh, doing our roll call in the chat oh, first. Yeah, 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 yeah. First in tonight is our good friend Relic Hominin, who said they'll really? be back tomorrow because they're over, over the you know over the pond there. Yeah, we'll catch you on the replay, bud. Good to see you, Relic Hominin. Appreciate it. And you. of course, we got Mick. Uh, Mick, who says, "Oh no, another new name in Sasquatch research. Looking forward to it." So he doesn't know <laughs> you, so. Uh, yeah. Sharon, hello, Sharon. Sharon's from Belgium. Good to see you, Sharon. See, we, cool. re- awesome. we remember it as, as absent minded as I can be. I remembered you're from Belgium. See that? <laughs> now, uh, what's your name, uh, down there on the you down there, right there? Uh, what's your name? Uh, Roy, Roy, uh, Rutabager, uh, Ralph, yeah, uh, like something like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we got Walter Kroll in the house, Don, Don Gamow Jr. Mitch Hargrove who said he'll catch us on the replay. Henry May also will catch us on the replay. Daniel Weeks Southern is uh, Daniel Weeks in the house. Low rider, good to see you. Martin Stilts, hello. Oh, there, there's the tra- uh, there is with the comment I saw. Pat Collins watching RMSO will make you go blind. <laughs> Pete H, good to see you. Uh, Ristol, good to see you. Ristol, Ristol, Ristol's in the house. Uncle Bones, too. Hello, Uncle Bones. Bones. Uh, Robert uh, Dunduvin is in the house. Bill, finding the trackway. Hello, sir. Uh, I think we already covered Pete H. Pete H, if we didn't, hello. Brian and Chewy go hiking. And Brian and Chewy go hiking. Brian? We're celebrating being a member 10 months. And uh, we're going to get oh. Brian and Chewy on real soon. Yeah. Well, I know we're going to get Brian on. I don't know, Chewy. I know dogs, you know, they'll be on if they want to be on. Uh, but again, Brian, thank you. And thank you. Yeah. We do give him a pat on the Appreciate head. For us. Yeah. Extra Tom, treat. Tom Connolly. Good to see you, Tom. Tom's in the oh. house. Out, out back orchard. Hello, out back. Back orchard. Jeremiah, Bigfoot Society. Snap hey, time. Jeremiah. And uh, hey, uh, there's my good buddy, Jim, traveling with Jim. There he is. Yeah. Hey, and uh, who else? Who else? I think. Uh, do you bat mom? Hey, bat mom. Bat mom's yep. Bat mom's in the house. Hello, bat mom. Good to see you. Uh, uh Jeff Strader. There he is. Jeff. Well, hey, what was that about? Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> no, no, Jeff. That was Kentucky Fried Fixes. But uh, I get it. <laughs> but uh, uh oh, he mentioned the word Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh Boris Khan, good to see you, sir. A second, I think this is the like second or third time we're seeing Boris in chat. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. That's right. Bigfoot Pizza in WrestleMania. Very cool. Right on, man. Yeah. 
Yep. Kaiju Ninja 1985. Hello, hello, hello. Kaiju Ninja, welcome. I think that's well, everybody, I think. So as they were talking, I was, I was apologizing. I said, you know, I know <laughs> it was not okay. It was terrible. Just kidding. I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Jay Fritz. Jay Good Fritz day. in the house. <laughs> we'll just leave that joke there. Yeah, I don't I don't we're not gonna read that out then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've got enough trouble with Friday. If you're, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure you drop by the YouTube channel and check out the video portion of the show, too. Uh, sometimes you'll see some of the things up on the screen that we don't normally talk about. Ah, there, there's Grasshopper in the house. Grasshopper. Hey, Mike. There's Mike, Tactical Bigfoot Research. Hello, Mike. sir. Hey, I know I know that guy. Yeah, Mike. See you, Tac. And, uh, yeah, he was just out with uh, Brian. Out in parts unknown, and mm -hmm. uh, they were uh, doing a little uh, boots on the ground stuff. Cool. And uh, David Gray, David, I hope you were feeling better, David. my friend. You know, I, just when I thought I got a bad, about four or five days, maybe even a week later, David got into a really bad wreck. Flipped his truck, broke his mm -hmm. collar, uh, broke oh. some bones in his. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't get it quite that bad. Thank you know, thank God. But I uh, met brother. I uh, pray for you every day, and I hope for. A recovery because we yeah. need you out this year when we do some investigations hang in there Dave. Um, so uh okay i think we're almost there jay we well, said jay fritz is there uh oh lurking his vault of bs i know who <laughs> that is <laughs> and we got little killer eye hunting woolly booger All right little killer. josh howard i'm back let's go hello hey, josh. josh welcome back <laughs> So and Blake Burrows, who finally said, "I Mike, it. welcome Blake." You get, so again, there's Mike Freeman. Hello, Mike. Oh, Mike, Mike. Freeman. Yep, yeah, this thing just popped by. It popped out again. More. Uh, there's John Sasquatch Wizard at Ronnex. We got Mike John Freeman out there. Yeah. And uh, Sasquatch Wizard. I think we got everybody now. I think so. Nope. So I'm anyhow, kind of getting lost. <laughs> I think we I think we got it. So let's get to our guest now. Yeah. We've been at just about 15 minute mark, which is uh -oh. pretty healthy. So Rod, let's let's get to this. What started you in this all this? Uh first of all, you run a, an organization called Bexar County Bigfoot. Where exactly in Texas is Bexar County? So um I'm in San Antonio, Texas. Nice area, yep. Yeah, and um, you know, it, we we pronounce it Bear. The the X is is silent. Um, oh, that's right. Other, that's right. Other, Bear County. I, yes, I remember yeah, that. Yep. Other people may say Behar, uh, and that's that's correct too. You know, I, you know, most people will say Bear County. You know, I I think it has a nice ring, Bear County Bigfoot. So I just kind of keep it, you know, okay. like that, just because it just kind of flows. I think the name sounds pretty pretty cool. So. Uh, that, that's, that's the way I keep it. Bear County, Bigfoot in San Antonio. Um, we're, we're, you know, South central more or less, uh, in Texas. So, you know, uh, Austin is about 60 minutes away from us. So, uh, we're about, uh, two and a half, two hours away from, um, Corpus Christi, which is the, uh, Gulf of Mexico as well. So, you know, we're kind of right in between kind of got the best of both worlds. Very cool. So weekend, when, weekend at the beach or weekend hunting Bigfoot. <laughs> you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Best of both so, worlds. So what got you uh, into uh, Bigfoot per se? Yeah, I, I would I would tell you, you know, I, and I tell everybody this from from a child. I, I, I was always a believer. You know, I, I really loved, you know, the unknown, um, you know, cryptids, uh, things like the UFOs, things like that. You know, I. Uh, I was I was the kid at the book fair that just would spend all his money on on Bigfoot books and Loch Ness monster and uh, things of that nature and and yeah you know and then uh, uh, kind of on a side note you know I was a, a big uh, primate fan you know so I followed people like Diane Fossey and and uh, Jane Goodall and uh, really really embraced uh, you know primates I really loved primates uh, my mom uh, introduced me to uh, a friend of hers that was uh, 
friends with Whitley Strieber, uh, who uh, had a uh, book, I guess when I, this first book was Communion, it yes. was uh, a UFO um, in, encounter and abduction. Uh, he's from San Antonio as well. So, you know, I, I was really surrounded a lot by, you know, whether it's cryptids, UFOs, things like that, you know, and then, you know, San Antonio itself has a history of, um, you know, sightings uh, and encounters uh, dating back to the 70s. You know, we have we used to have an Air Force base called Kelly Air Force Base a long time ago. And uh, that was, uh, you know, surrounded by a community, a, a residential area. And, you know, there were some sightings there and some prints. And that was in the uh, newspaper as well. Uh, we've had, uh, f there's a famous 911 phone call of a homeless couple that uh, ran into one of these creatures. And uh, they were asking for animal control. And, and um, they saw this thing and, and it, had, it had a white-tailed deer. Uh, it was it was uh, chomping down on it and uh, looked up at them and uh, screamed at them and ran off with that deer and you know so we we've definitely have some uh, some activity and and you know I, fast forward to my adult life I um, I was watching a YouTube channel from a gentleman that was uh, in Utah and I I can't remember exactly the channel I don't think the channel is around anymore but it was fascinating to me because he presented trace evidence in the form of wood structures. That was what he uh, documented, wood structures, prints. He also had his own uh, encounter as well that he talked about, but a lot of it was on the wood structure side. And, you know, to me, I was looking at this stuff and I was just kind of like, wow, this is interesting. I, I was totally ignorant to, to the subject. I, I knew there was uh, a Bigfoot and to my knowledge, it was just, you know, Patterson Gimlin film and, it was up there in Northern California or Washington state. And, and that was where it was at. And that was it, you know? And so come to find out uh, that is not so. Uh, these, these creatures reside in, you know, all over the sprinkled all around the United States. Uh, so I binge watched, I was on disability. Uh, I had hurt my back. And, and uh, we, I, I think we talked about that, Steve, yeah, yeah, you know, um, yep. you know, my lower, my lower back and the, uh, 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 the, Ooh. you know, it was, it was, I had sciatica, the, you know, the whole thing. Right. So, um, I was, I was out for, for actually three months. It was bad. It was really bad, but I was still kind of mobile, but I was just kind of slow walking. Right. Yep. And, uh, I bench watched all this gentleman's videos and the last, the last video he, uh, he told us his methodology. He, he showed us, he mapped it out and said, Hey, if you think that this is a hoax, you think I'm putting you on, you think this is a lie. Let me show you what I find, what I look for in order to find this trace evidence, right? And um, you know, the, the habitat has to support big game. There has to be a water source. Uh, so that was one of the things, a couple of things that he laid out, and you know, a number of other things. But the main thing was creeks and greenways uh, that correlate with sightings and trace evidence, right? So makes all all makes great uh, makes great sense. Yes, sir. It does. So, you know, so I, I watched all of it and I sat there and I said, you know what, I'm going to go out tomorrow and, and I, I'm going to test this theory. I'm going to test this because, you know, I, I'm I'm naturally a skeptic. I, I, I always have been. Now, while I want to believe at that point in time and I felt like I was a believer, you know, from a little kid, I, I you have to really debunk yourself. I, I really, I really feel like you have to kind of just be your own uh, critic, right? So, yeah. I went out <laughs> and I said, "Okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to, I'm going to test this theory." I went out with my son, who was, uh, I think he was like 11 or 12 at the time, and um, I went out find to find a wood structure using the same methodology. And that day, I we found a wood structure using this the that same methodology, and it blew my mind because I, I sat there and I was like. This is, this is, this is crazy. Like I, this has got to be homeless people. This has got to be boy scouts, you know, whatever the case was. And then I started examining these pieces and they were ripped out. Some of them had the root system still on them. Uh, they were not cut. Uh, they were in an A-frame fashion and they were close to uh, five, six feet tall. And, and inside the, the, the ground is very compressed. The leaves were flat. Everything was flat. Like something with weight was uh, had had been in this wood structure, and it it blew my mind. And I thought, "There's no way. There's no way. 
I couldn't believe it. So the next day, I went out again to a different spot that ran alongside this very prominent creek that we have in San Antonio. It's called Salado Creek. It has lots of history with Native Americans, fur trappers. Uh, uh, you know, it's got a lot of history. There's a there was a famous battle. Uh, I think it was post Santa Ana. Uh, I think it was one of his last last uh, battles or last uh, you know conflicts or whatever. Now, 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 what was the name of the uh, creek? Salado Creek. Oh, Salado Creek. Yeah, I, I so, thought not to be confused with the Salada Creek, which is where they make the tea out of. Mm. So bad joke, I, I know. All right, <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Now I have yet to do this to, in, a, in a while. Yeah, but I, I have to do this. You know what that joke deserves, Chris? Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Rated Ralph. Yeah, I, I just got my. I, I just Ralphed myself. Rated I Ralph. Loved, loved every bit of it. <laughs> you know, so I I went out the next day and I found another wood structure. This time I took my mother out with me, who who was like, "You're you're nuts. What do you what do you what are you doing with your life, Rod?" And I'm like, "Hey, mom, you gotta you gotta come out and check this out." <laughs> mom, look I, at this. <laughs> I I took her out and she was and she was like, "What?" Who would build this? Why? Why would anybody build it? It was it was baffling. Uh, so th that, and, that, that, and, that's how it began, you know. And, and before and before your your mother actually visualized that all that, she was probably going, "Oh, don't worry, I'm just going to go with him, and then we're going to take him to that the nice place with the padded room." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly what I was thinking. That that's what she was thinking too, you know, and. and Come to find out, she was she was just as as, cool. as baffled and intrigued as I was, and she's and one of the things that she said, examining this other wood structure that we had found, was she's like something with intelligence built this. It, it wasn't it wasn't just by chance. This wasn't trees that just fell over. This wasn't you know there was there was some weaving. There were some things in this that just doesn't happen naturally. So from that point on, I kind of became. Uh, I guess I dubbed myself the, the wood structure guy, I guess, you know, and, and that is the trace evidence that I, I find now come to find out this, this Creek greenway is very, it runs really right down the middle of the city and it's, it runs for miles from North to South. And so, and then it goes outside of the city and runs into other towns, other, other uh, areas in South Texas as well. And so, uh, you know, I've been examining this creek and utilizing these wildlife or these uh, wilderness parks that are attached to this this greenway, this creek greenway. Uh, with with the there, now, there's a water source about a mile away from me, uh, and you know it's it's a very uh, sizable water source in the form of a, uh, a it's like a small lake. Mm -hmm. So you know now if you're you're talking about a water source, you're talking about a habitat that supports big game. I think you have a recipe for some cryptid activity. And, and I think that's kind of what I've been chasing this, this whole time. You know, I don't think it's, it's, it's Boy Scouts. I don't think it's bushcraft. I don't think it's uh, stuff that naturally happens by itself. You know, we're talking about, you know, 10 to maybe 12, 13 foot pieces uh, of tree of, 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 whole trees that did not grow in that area that are ripped out of the ground and fashioned into either a teepee, an A-frame, or a wigwam type, wigwam type of structure. And so, you know, that begs the question, you know, either there is a, 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 a really huge guy running around building these things or a team of people strategically placed all around the city building all of these wood structures just for a grand hoax. And I, I don't believe it for a minute because we're coming up on six years of, of Bear County Bigfoot and I keep tabs of my areas fairly consistent morning, noon, and towards the evening. I, I haven't been out at night because some of these places, uh, you know, I could pretty much get arrested. Uh, I, you know, it's kind of private. So, you know, surely within six years of doing this, I would have run into somebody building these things. And and if, and if that was the case, I would openly admit and go, hey, look, 
there it is. Yep, yep, mystery solved. There you go. But I've I've yet to run into one person, one person building this stuff. So again, so what what is it? Who is it? And so looking at these wood structures, I can place the style and the shape of these wood structures with somebody else that's up in Washington State, that's uh, Oregon, uh, Northern California, Oklahoma, and they they almost look the same. So if that's happening here and I can place the, the likeness, if you will, uh, with a lot of other researchers that are that are that are uh, documenting these things, I've got something substantial. I, I believe I do, and you know, a, along with that, you've got uh, some prints. I've done some castings. I've done about three or four castings myself. Um, about three or four months ago, well, no, a little bit longer. My wife and I uh, had an encounter on the south side of San Antonio on the Sand Creek Greenway uh, with something that that growled at us that was very guttural, very low. Um, we have no idea what it was. It, it threw a, whatever it was, I feel like it threw a huge rock at us. It, it, it fell into the Creek. Uh, and this, this particular part of the Creek has a uh, running water, a very nice uh, spring. So I don't know what it was. I didn't see it. Uh, and at the same time that was happening on the high ground, we had a, a, a higher, uh, um, a piece of property, uh, uh, on the, on the right-hand side of us, that was probably about 15, maybe 15, 20 feet up uh, from where we were at, there was something that was paralleling us uh, alongside. And I could see some of the saplings moving back and forth, this thing, whatever it was, moving back and forth. I can see these trees kind of just bending a little bit. And, uh, you know, so again, that was something that we had experienced. I'd never, I'd never heard or seen um, in my now, life. Now, Rod, let me, let me ask you a few sure. questions. What kind of animals? Um, uh, I mean, obviously, I, I don't think you guys have bear. We do not have bears, even though you're pronounced Bear County. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about beaver? No. Okay, that's a good point too, because and the reason why I asked that because I know in Southeast Texas, uh, in the in the uh, the uh, Paris area, the mm -hmm. uh, 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 they do have beaver out there. Right, uh, but I I know you guys are for way further south by several right. hours, and right. it's a lot of the temperature is a lot warmer and a little bit more arid in places. So yes. that's why I wanted to ask. Yes. So that you know, usually if I I hear somebody hearing a splash in the water, a big splash, mm. I, I remember those beavers and in, and in, in, uh, jumping into Pat May's Lake in Paris, and mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. But it turned out we, we got one on film. It was a big beaver jumping in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you guys don't have beaver there. And you don't have bear there. And nope. it doesn't matter because bear don't growl anyway. Uh, a lot right. of people don't know that. Bear, bears don't have the... They uh, they huff, they chatter their teeth. Right. Uh, but they don't growl. Um, and, and if I may, I can describe the sound. And, and the way I, I can describe it was that it was like... Um, it was like listening... <laughs> Realistic hip hop song where you've got that bass, that resonating bass, right? Boom, right? Boom. It's a, it was like two different vocals in one. It was like guttural and it was like resonating, right? And it, and it was very odd. And it happened twice. My wife turned around and looked at me and said, "Did you hear that?" I was like, "I absolutely heard that." She was like, "This is weird. I've we've never what, heard anything like what, that." What part of the body when you heard that growl? What part of the body did it affect the most? It, it hit me right in my chest. It there, like there you go. And, and I, the reason why I ask that is right. my, one of my very first cases I ever got was back in 2000. And um, I had been at it for a couple of years, set the website up in 99, got my first one in 2000. And this gentleman and his wife had an experience. They had a vocalization. And it always struck me, he says, because he was an outdoorsman, been there for years, you know, since he was mm -hmm. a kid hiking the same areas encountered bear he goes i'll tell you what this thing screamed at me and it got me right here the basement right. it was so big it got me in the chest so that's why when i asked that question it was no surprise to me when you said chest well and and you know i've been in music for over 20 years i see um, that i've been in music over 20 years uh, uh i was a, i was a bull rider for eight years i rode bulls uh you know I, there's a lot of things that don't scare me a lot of things that don't scare me 
And this instilled fear in me instantly, right. instantly. And I thought my first, my first reaction is somebody told me, well, pull out your camera and start videoing. That's the last thing you think of. Right. That's hey. the last yeah. thing you think of. You put yourself in that situation and go, okay, now I'm going to pull up my camera. Okay. Come out and show yeah. yourself. There's no way. First thing I'm going to do is try to protect my wife. And that's what I did. I, I, I wanted to get her out of there. And that's, and that's what we did. And, you know, but, but going back to the, to the vocal itself, it, it, it was like being at a concert and it just resonated. It hits you right in that chest, man. Now, now, very, very odd. Now, Mike made a comment thinking of Squatch D singing hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rod, I don't know if you know this, but I, I noticed you were, you know, looking at your Facebook page, you were obviously were a singer in a band. Yes. Yeah. And was yeah. it a metal, was it a metal band? I played metal. I played, uh, it was like almost death metal. So a lot of so growling and screaming, you know. I, I was a singer in a band <laughs> called Sinister Recall. Nice. Right on. So, yes. Yeah, that's yeah, I, yeah you I, metal, why, dude. Right on. Yeah, that, that's why Mike was needling me with the hip hop. <laughs> hey, you know what? I love all music, though, so I'll, yeah. I, I don't take offense to any of that stuff. So. No. <laughs> fact, Mike's one, a good dude, man. I, yes. I love Mike. In fact, one of one of my songs and one of my little known talents, and I don't know if I can do it anymore. I haven't done it in a year, but um <laughs> oh, no. yes, I, I I can I can beatbox with the best. You can of beatbox, it. dude. Man, right on. And, and, oh, and, the, no. and the funny thing is, we actually incorporated that into one of our songs, which was kind of cool. And put out an album, man. Let's we did. We we we. <laughs> um. See, and Pat played guitar for 20 years. <laughs> cool. Nice. Right on. There you I, go. I still play at one. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, you know, for me, it was it was very, um, that, that encounter was something that was new to us because this whole time I had just been following these wood structures going down, you know, uh, the, the creek and, you know, Looking at San Antonio itself, it literally the city literally sits on an underground cavern. We have an uh, underground cavern where we get our water. It's called the Edwards Underground Aquifer, and that stretches that cavern stretches all the way from San Antonio to Austin. So we're talking about an hour's difference. That's right. a lot. That's a lot of underground cavern. A lot of passage. My my working theory was that. These things use the 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 the, the greenways uh, creeks as a highway, and they use them at night uh, because because we're talking about uh, suburban areas, uh, and and so if if we're talking about that now we don't you know I I've I've not seen any of these things you know at all I haven't seen these creatures I'm not going to pretend that I have at all I'm I'm not going to say that. Uh, but I do believe that they use these greenways and creeks at night to do I their do. hunting. They, 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 they. Uh, uh, I believe that they go after the whitetail deer. That is, and it's plentiful here. I mean, we've got whitetail all over the place, right? So, you know, a, a great food source, number one. And then, and then I think I believe at during the day they're underground, uh, and whether if they reside there or or, or travel around, I, I don't know. But what I do know is this, it's cooler, right? Uh, we do have high humidity here. We have crazy, terrible summers here. So if you're an eight foot uh, a biped covered in hair, I think the last thing you want to do is be outside during the day. And then not only that, the heat that your body would emit as, as, as a, a big uh, eight foot, seven foot, whatever, hominid, right? That that's you know you, you don't want to be outside during the day. So I I felt like these things utilize these creeks and greenways as their highway. They're hunting at night, uh, and then you know during the day maybe they reside underneath, and then you know the cycle continues type of thing. And that's kind of my working. Now can I prove it? I no I can't. But that's a that's kind of a working theory that I've got. Well, you know, Rod, I think one of the misconceptions a lot of people have about Texas is if they've only been through like on I-40 up at the very top, they mm. think, oh, it's all desert and cows and right. weed lots, you know, and that's it. Right. No. Texas is a no. very, well, of course, everybody knows Texas is the largest state, mm -hmm. but they've got green, 
<laughs> they've got hills and hollows and uh, rivers and streams and creeks. A lot, a lot of watersheds there. Yes, absolutely. And it's just unbelievable the the variety that you can see of, of the country just driving through Texas. Man. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've got so many uh, different types of habitats, you know, in our. Um, I think I need to take patient on Chris's last statement. Oh, <laughs> you know, we've got Gulf, we've got the Gulf Coast, we've got um, we've got desert, we've got we've got thick forests, we've got swamps, yeah. we've got it all. Yeah, you know, uh, it's amazing to me because I, I spent a lot of time down in Texas. And uh, it's amazing. I, I spent some time actually in the Houston area. I've been down to San Antonio. I, I, I've traveled that whole East Coast. Um, yep. And uh, actually, I've also been out to Amarillo. Um, so I, I've traveled pretty extensively. I've been through I-40. I've been through I-20. I've been through I-10, mm -hmm. Walter, Texas. Um, and it is a very diverse system when you yeah. get to certain areas. Mm -hmm. It's it's jungle. It's just like Louisiana in places. You get to sure. some areas, it, it's forested. You get to mm -hmm. other areas, it's like desert as desert can be. But that because yeah. that is the most of Texas. That's what people can usually commonly associate Texas with is this big dust bowl with tumbleweeds flowing by and a cat right. or two, yeah. and uh, right. maybe maybe some guy dressed like Wyatt Earp. But uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. But that's that's just not so. Um, and uh, by the way, San Antonio is a beautiful city, by the way. Love the Alamo. Thank you. Love the. Uh, Thank you. Uh, now, I, I just want to confirm that no Bigfoot was shot behind the Home Depot, correct? No, no, no. And I will not and, speak the name because I will not give that person any power. Uh, they did not, did not deserve it. <laughs> I, I figured I, I had to take that swing there. No. No, as you should, because it's it's BS is what it is. So yeah, that mu that must have created a bunch of hell for you guys. You know, well, just... it did it, it did because because I, I'm I'm trying to um, I'm not trying to convert people into believing what I believe, but there's there these things are real, you know, and and when we've got people out there doing whatever it is, you know, tomfoolery here, it 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 makes people like me that are out there really searching for the truth and trying to, you know, find answers look, look like crap, you know? And so the does, it doesn't help us at all. <laughs> One now, bit. Now, usually I would be very skeptical of tree structures, but I, I'll tell you why, because you have the people that will go out there once and start finding tree structures any, sure. anywhere without, sure. any, without any methodology. And the thing is, is that you keep going back to these areas and rechecking them and rechecking them and seeing more and seeing difference. Right. And that, that's a bit different than what we typically see, you know, on the drive by social media where, Oh yeah, look at this strict structure I found. Well, right. You know, without any context of, you know, well, were there any sightings nearby? Was there any other sign that you can find? You know, right. how often do you go there? What's the ecosystem? What's the, you know, sure. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, so you make a lot of valid points, and that methodology is solid. I mean, where are you going to look for a creature? Right, and 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 here's I approach everything with humility and critical thinking. Right. I, I'm not going to say I'm not going to look at every little stick or every tree and go, oh, oh, Bigfoot. You know, right. I, don't, I don't I don't do that. I don't do that. Right. right. I I try to debunk myself. I try to look at it and go, was was. Right. Are there people involved? Or, or what do these pieces look like? I have to examine. Did this did this tree grow here? Right? Was it what, or was it? How was it placed here? Is the root right. system still attached? Right. So, so these are these are things that I think people overlook, and, and, and they're really quick to write it off. They're really quick to write it off to go. Oh, that's people. That's Boy Scouts. Oh, that's fake. Are you really? You come come over here and let me show you a fifteen foot tree with the root system still attached fashioned in like a teepee type of structure and and tell me if if you are able to lift it up and move it around you know feet uh from where it grew to to make this tree structure well uh rod on the on the tree structures have you noticed any of the type where it looks like they pulled a tree up or broke it off at the ground and then carried mm -hmm. it somewhere and then leaned it up against another tree and maybe you know leaned some other tree kind of like they're making a teepee or something Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's there's plenty of leans. There's plenty of um, 
uh, A-frames. Uh, what I come across a lot are more of the A-frame type of uh, variety. Um, like, uh, we have, like a like an A position, but it's laying right. down on the ground sometimes, or. Well, it, it can. It can. Uh, it depends uh, on the area and the lay of the land. I mean, we're very kind of hilly in, in, in right. San Antonio. Uh, so it, it could be just a one side lean right. or it could be a, a full on a frame. Uh, one of the biggest ones that I have found uh, was off of a creek greenway called the Leon Creek, which is northwest in San Antonio. Uh, and that was I called it the beast. And I, I discovered that wood structure back in, I want to say, 2018. And uh, it was just phenomenal. It was like a wigwam structure. I, I took a wildlife biologist with me uh, to go to, because he contacted me and said, hey, man, you're, you know, you're posting some really cool stuff. Can you, I live in San Antonio, or I live around in the area. I think he lives on the outskirts. Can I come in and check out what you've got? And I said, yeah, sure, I'll meet up with you. And I, I showed him some of the stuff. And his mind was blown because he had no answer for me. He's like, I'm like, what animal does this? That's indigenous to this area. Right. None, none whatsoever. And I said, do you think it's people? And he said, why would people do this? Why would people take the time to make this? It doesn't keep out rain. It doesn't keep out sunlight. Why would a person do this for what, you know, and this, and the percentage of people that know about this stuff is very, very minuscule, very minuscule. So, you know, so what, what is it, you know, then I don't, I'm not going to say who is it, 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 what, what is it? It's, it's, I believe it's, a, a, I believe it's cryptid in origin, you know, now you know, I'm, so I'm not going to, I'm sorry, so, Steve. Uh, so, so, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that people that have come by on a trail have put their own little, you know, touch on it or whatever. I, I'm not going to deny that. But if you're looking at pieces that are, uh, the, you know, uh, eight, nine, ten inches uh, in diameter and twelve foot tall, you know, who, who you have Every to wonder? Guy's not going to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to wonder. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jay Fred. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much. What a great. Guy. And for the folks that are getting the gift memberships, if you like what you see there, again, we're going to be having another seminar in uh, just a few, uh, another couple of weeks. And uh, we do seminars every once a month. Um, you know, if you like what you see and you like supporting the channel, stick around. There's going to be a lot going on. Just uh, waiting for me to get some clearances, Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Jay. Appreciate you, buddy. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, Steve. What? what, what I'm sorry. What were you going to say, sir? Totally forgot. <laughs> well, Rod piqued my interest with these uh, uh, these structures here. Rod, uh, do you think some of them are like nests for sleeping in at night, and maybe others may be designed for something else? I'll tell you. Daytime I'll tell you, hiding. I'll tell you what my thoughts are. Um, okay. and it, and again, uh, I, the disclaimer that I, I tell everybody is like I, I, I'm not there 24 seven, so right. I, I don't right. know. Right. Uh. I think because because the size of these things can vary, a lot of them are a little bit smaller because I'll post this stuff uh, on on my social media accounts, and uh, and I get the question, well, this isn't big enough for a Bigfoot to, to live in, and I'm like, okay, uh, they do have children, they do have kids, right? So to my knowledge, they can travel in 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 pods or in tribes or whatever you want to call it. So if we're talking about these these creatures procreating, uh, they've got children. So I think that some of these are for the kids to, to be put in and, and stay safe while they go out and hunt. The adults go out and hunt. They get their kill. They come back, pick the child up, and then go back to wherever they reside. And that's that's the that's what I I think is what's it's not going. it's not a not a uh, not a bad working theory to tell you the truth. I mean, not think at all. About it, think about it because that'll protect them from anything falling on them. Right. You right. Know, it it's, may not yeah. keep them a hundred percent away from the environment, but do you right. get a lot of rain in San Antonio anyway? Last year was kind of dry. It really was. Yeah. Um, we, we've now this year we we're, we're getting a little bit more, which is, which is good. I'm I'm really happy to, to see that. So you know that last year was kind of an odd, 
an oddball year. So, uh, but but typically we'll get some consistent rain, uh, you know, in in San Antonio and South Texas. Um, so, yeah, since we 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 kind of started touching that topic, Mick asked a question. I'm going to get to his question mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. It says, do you think any of the structures that you've seen have an evident purpose? Obviously, you just said that, such as a blind. How about a hunting mm. blind? Do you think they may lay in wait in one of them for a, as a hunting blind? Absolutely, because white tail are creatures of habit, right? So if so, a lot of these a lot of these wood structures are found adjacent, uh, maybe just a few feet away from a game trail, right? So uh, and, and there's coverage. They'll they'll some some of them will have one side where it's where it's got foliage. And it's covered, right. and then right. about maybe six feet away, there's there's a or six or seven feet there's there's the game trail, you know. And knowing, uh, my my family hunted a lot, you know. Whitetail was always the thing that we hunt here. Uh, they're they're creatures of habit, you know. You can you can just you know that they're going to come through. So now, if we're, we're that, that's we're, the am- amazing thing about our 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 wonderful country, we are probably separated by about 1,100, 1,200 miles. And and the major species to hunt around here is white-tailed deer. I tell you, there you go, there you go. And in fact, in fact, the city will have an overpopulation. Mm-hmm. The city will 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 bait these things and trap them, and then move them out further out into other places because like New the York. Population. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> we'll we'll move them to New York. Yeah. You know, we'll we'll we'll, yeah. we'll tell them that their family's going to go pick them up there, and that. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's not. So uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So Mike, we, Mike Freeman also asked the question too: Are the have there been any instances where you found prints or uh, in or, or hair in or around those structures? Yes, yes, I have. Uh, in fact, we found uh, about three, four days ago. I found a uh, big clump of of hair. Uh, black coarse uh uh kind of uh wavy uh and and one thing i had to sit there and go well you know we're we're, we're wild hogs coming through here and wild hogs have straight yeah that's something straight you hair guys have. Yep. right straight hair right but uh this was this was very uh curled up i, I don't know if, if, if it's related to uh the subject uh i have found other pieces other other uh tufts of hair uh, and I, I've collected. My only problem is this, Steve. You know, I'm self-financed, and um, sure. I, I'm, so, I'm not making money. So, you know, right? Yeah. So here's here's something you may or may not know. Mm-hmm. Um, are you familiar with a Darby Orcut? No. no. Okay. So Dor- Darby Orcut is a scientist, uh, the University of North Carolina, Chris. Ooh, I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Anyway, he has a DNA study, and you oh. can submit DNA those hairs for DNA examination, mm-hmm. and it doesn't cost you anything to do it. Really? Yes. Can you send me that information? Because I I, I, I I certainly can. And if I you would want, really love if that. You, if you want to, <laughs> here's another suggestion: is uh, get some very high quality pictures under some good light, maybe a white background to these hairs. Okay. Right. And you want to send them to maybe somebody like Dr. Jeff Meldrum to evaluate or maybe Kathy Strain was another anthropologist, archaeologist. And that way they can before you go sending it off to Darby, they may recognize that as a known species of hair that that we may not. Because let's face it. I, I can't get a ha- all hair and say, oh, that's this or that's that. Right, certain, right. Like, I, I got a hair one time. I brought it back, and I put it under some light and got a big magnifying glass. And I noticed it was a very reddish, uh, reddish brown hair, but it had a black tip. It was a fox. Mm. Interesting. And, okay. I mean, it wasn't very long. So that, that that you know, you want to, before you're sending it off to Darby, and because we don't want to kill all the time on the study with with samples that are going to be no no and void right when right, i first right. get them look at it, say hey i i can't identify this hair you know no, and, and, yeah. yeah no that's that's and those are those and those are things i i don't know i'm still right. kind of i still consider myself a uh, uh, a student a, a newbie yeah. you yeah. know and, i really and, do yeah in so, fact it's uh, darbyorcut.com okay o r c u t t Darby first name D A R B Y or cut O R U uh O R C U T T dot com. Yeah. 
if you could send me any, I would yeah. love, I would yeah. love to get in contact with anybody yeah. that is willing right. to take in any of my samples uh, because I, you know, I don't know, I don't right. know where to take them or where to send them type of sure. thing. So yeah, oh. absolutely. Tell you okay. something else too, right? Uh, now I made a purchase, uh, gosh, uh, three or four years ago now was a little microscope that plugs into your USB on your computer. Oh yeah. Those things are great. Oh, like, uh, okay. Well, there were like 20 bucks, but uh, you really, you talk about bringing something in, man. Yeah. You could put, you could put a hair on a piece of a white piece of paper, then hold the microscope down there on it and just look at it on your computer monitor and it'll let you record or take a picture or whatever. And that would be great. To, those, those are great for, uh, you get an image of the hair and yeah. then you go back through and look online. What does this match? What does this match? And if it doesn't match anything, Hey, <laughs> you got, you got something, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know what, yeah. you know, you know what, Chris, you know why Chris bought that at first, right? Why? I know I have a hair follicle here somewhere. <laughs> I know I got a hair follicle here somewhere. Oh no. <laughs> That's yeah. Sorry, yeah, as you can see, I'm in rare form tonight, folks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that deserves a Ralph. <laughs> oh, did I, Chris? Uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh oh. Hello. Uh oh. We lost Chris. Uh oh. Look, I, I can't I can hear anybody. I can still see you. Uh oh, it's me, folks. I lost my sound. Uh oh. Uh, testing one, two. Yep. There I can is. hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, we got it back. We I got can it. Hear you. Yep. I mean, Chris. Chris. Chris is gone. Wait. Like, He's trying to come back. I think he's getting there. Wish Chris would wait till I, I knew it was a, I knew it was a technical glitch on my side. So oh, that's okay, man. I can <laughs> pop out and pop right back in. No big deal. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes. So um, anyway, at the top of the hour, I would love to play a game with you two gentlemen, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be kind of a funny game. Um, let's do it now. Um, just to break up our talk as we've been, uh, uh, well, actually let's get to the rest of the questions. Cause we got like eight, eight things. In the oh, chat, yeah. So, yeah. so we got Brian and Chewy. That's 10. Um, Tom Connolly asked Rod, how big were them? I guess he was talking about the, uh, the, uh, tree structures at the time, but you've already mentioned so, that some of them were, so they, they, uh, they, they're going to vary. Some of them, uh, you know, you there are four foot uh, in, in in stature uh i've i've had some that uh you know that i took the wildlife biologist to uh he was six foot tall and he could pretty much stand up in that thing he just kind of had to spend his neck a little bit down and um but I, i've seen him as tall i i seen him as tall as going inside close to uh, six and a half feet maybe seven foot Depending you know, on the area. It, the structures just make sense to me, too, because these creatures, some of them are very big. And what are they going to do? Now, at nighttime, they're perfectly fine. Uh, they right. can be bop around in the dark, and nobody's going to be out there, you know, screaming and running in terror. But in the daytime, hey, man, they got to stay out of sight. So what are you going to do? Right. You know, right. Have to do right. Something. Well, and, and, that, and that's why, I, you know, the cavern theory makes a little sense to me mm -hmm. uh and, th and think about it uh um you know there it's cooler it's 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 you know and then and then, we, and then if we're going to go back to the 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 whatever the eye shine the call eye shine these you know these uh, people that have seen these these eyes glow mm -hmm. you know and now now at night you know with without lights on these things these eyes are glowing so again the 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 underground theory i think makes a little sense um well could, you know i i always have a little caution when it comes to that because the amount for, of light needed for 
eyes to make eye shine is very little. And a lot of people don't know that. It can be the dimmest of light, and these lights will, uh, their eyes will illuminate very bright. Um, and the fact that no mammal can do that kind of bioluminesce. So I, I kind of shy away from that because that's not just one step away from known science. It's a, a few steps away. Uh, being, But your underground theory, I think, is very solid given the, the temperature or the climate of the, uh, southern Texas because it is very hot. And that may be just an adaptation, a cultural adaptation that they do there to avoid. Right. And staying in that big basking heat. Right. Right. And and the fact that this cavern stretches all the way into Austin. Yeah. We're, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. I mean, I know you can't tell me that the city knows every nook and cranny of these caverns. They don't. Right. There's no way. Right. Are you serious? There's no way, you know? So, uh, you know, I, so that's, that's kind of what I now, and this is coming from, you know, looking at the, the Creek and greenways that I've seen and understanding, you know, some of, um, the wildlife that I've seen there, uh, and, and, and also understanding a little bit of the history, I think from some of these creeks and, and there's a lot of Creek was actually used as passage to San Antonio, you know, before the city grew, right? Native Americans used it to get in and out. Oh, it makes sense, right? So I can't go, I can't go to a, a patch of woods that makes no sense in passage and go, yep, Sasquatch was here. I know it. There's, it has to make sense, right? Where's the passage in and out? Where's, where, where, where is the, 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 the creek of the greenway? And, and, and a lot of the, the encounters that I have heard uh, through different podcasts where, you know, Hey, I was hunting off this Creek and then I saw the creature, you know, so yeah. it, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense to me. <clears throat> Very cool. Okay. Let's hit the game. I think you guys are going to have fun with this. So earlier, uh, you know, you had mentioned that uh, I was mispronouncing bear County. I was pronouncing it as Bexer, which is completely wrong. And somehow I knew that, but I had forgotten it. So, New York has some of the weirdest names of cities and towns. And uh, so I'm going to put this one out to Chris and you pronounce this one. Oh, that's easy. I got it. I know. <laughs> uh, what the heck? I, I couldn't even tell you. I know this one. Okay, Chris, fire away. <laughs> That's Schenectady. Yeah. Schenectady. That's right, Chris. You got it. Schenectady. All right. I, I've been there. <laughs> Man. All right. Team Mason Dixon is one for one. That, that sounds like some kind of like disorder or I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> Schenectady, okay. yeah. Well, Weird. little known fact, Schenectady is the birthplace of Ann B. Davis. Ann B. Davis was the actress that played Alice in uh, in The Brady Bunch. Oh, oh really? wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I didn't know okay. that. Okay. And, and Schenectady was also the home of the first AM radio station. Oh, that's cool. All right. Okay. Next one, next one up. Oh boy, here we 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 got some stumpers here. Poughkeepsie, that's New York. Yeah. Yep. Oh, hang on, hang on. We gotta get, we gotta get the. Uh... All right, two for two for the Mason Dixon crew. Poughkeepsie, New York. I've been there in the winter. I did not like it. All right. <laughs> okay, the next three are gonna get tough. Here we go. Skin. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> you got me on that, man. You got me okay. on that. I have no idea. That one is skinny atlas. Okay. First, I, I was going to say snake eaters. Uh, I'm, yeah, uh, my I, dyslexia I, I, came I was going to say the same thing. I, skinny atlas. Like snake eaters. Skinny atlas. Snake okay. eaters. Yeah. Now, that makes sense. Next, now, the next one's going to be the next one is a crick. Oh, Cairo, know. Egypt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, this is a town in New York. In New York? That's Cairo, New York? Wow. Cool. 
Cairo. Right on. Yeah. Wrong. Eh, it's pronounced Cairo. No, no. Cairo. What? It, right here, it's pronounced Cairo. <laughs> All right. But yeah. In New York, it's pronounced. In the South, we say Cairo. <laughs> All right, we're two for four. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Cairo is that syrup that you get comes in the bottle and you put yeah. it in pancakes. That's no, that's, yeah. hey, that's K A R O. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've used. Yeah. yeah that's uh. Cairo. <laughs> and the next Ooh. one up. The next one up. Here we go. God, I don't, all I see is like spaghetti and coke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm out. I don't know. So there's two prop, there's two proper ways of, of saying this. The old timers will pronounce it scatico. Scatico. Mm. Right? And, and uh, some other people will pronounce it scatacoke. Mm. Scatacoke. I don't think I've ever been through there. Uh, it's I, have, no. I didn't remember it. I, that, I, that one got me. I don't know. All right. That, that's the ones for tonight. Just to figure out a little fun with that. <laughs> that was cool. I got Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Uh, I can say that. Oh, and, and, and Chris got Schenectady. Yeah. He did. Yeah, the only I reason why I know that, them, yeah. I, I I was on a tour uh, and we went through we went through Poughkeepsie to Syr- uh through Poughkeepsie Sy- Syracuse. So there you go. Oh, here we go. Is it pronounced Louisville or Louisville? Well, oh, Louisville. come on. No, 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 no. Come on now. No, come no. on now. No, no. If you're in Kentucky, it's Louisville. It's Louisville, yeah. Louisville. I know that. No, no, no. Just, Louisville. Just Louisville. I know that. Louisville. Yeah. I have no S Louisville. in there at all. It's you don't, Louisville. You don't, Lord help you. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. That's right. Uh, you know, Jermac, who, uh, welcome, Jermac 10. Uh, good to see you and glad to see you're chatting away. <laughs> and um, we have yeah. intercourse in PA. You also yeah. have. You also have Bird in Hand, and you also have Blue Ball, Pennsylvania, too. Whoa, whoa! I think I've, <laughs> I think I've driven through Intercourse, PA. Wow, I believe I have. Yeah, wow, that, that name and, sticks and, with you. And, and there is a T-shirt they sell in Intercourse, New York, that says <laughs> Virginia may be for lovers, but we have intercourse. <laughs> oh my god! Such an ugly word, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, but you know. Uh, yeah, I live in Bird in Hand, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Louisville. That's right, hey, Bristol. Yeah. You got it. Louisville. That's it. weirdo. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, I, I remember a lot of the uh, the names out. Like, in, I'm going to pick on you guys in Oklahoma because uh, along I 40, you've got towns like Lotta Wada. <laughs> oh, my God. There's a yeah. lot of lakes around there. So, yeah, Lotta Wada and. A lot hey, of what? what? Eufaula, I think, was yeah. one of them. Eufaula. Oh, wow. Look at this. Hell, Michigan. Two Hell. dot. Two dot. Two Montana. Montana. All right. That's a new Green, one on me. Greenwick. Greenwick. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's true. Blue Ball is right next to Intercourse. <laughs> no lie. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Coincidence. True. Coincidence. And, and Bird in Hand is also nearby, too. Uh, uh, Possum Junction, Kentucky. Yeah, well, ah, there we, it is. Toad suck Toad Arkansas. Suck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was in Satanville, Florida, when I drove through a storm on my back. Oh man! Hey, Chris, it's, are you? Hey, have you Bill, been to that, Bill? That was the first joke you've told that doesn't get Ralphed. <laughs> that was good. Chris, Go ahead, have you Rod. been to? Have you been to Hellier, Kentucky? Uh, Hellier. No, I can't recall. Uh, I may have. <laughs> there is a on... there's a documentary called Hellier, mm-hmm. and it's about the uh, um, well. It goes down the rabbit hole to other stuff, but right. some of it is uh, about the cave systems in Hellier, Kentucky, mm-hmm. that uh, some of these some people have have, have seen these cryptids um, coming out of these these cave. Uh, these caves, these cave systems, right. and um, and it's it's a very uh, interesting uh, documentary. Uh, it's so I, I didn't know if that was something out. you had heard of or not. Can you um, there is. the title of it, uh, Rod? What was the title? It's, uh, it's it's called Hellier. That's 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 Hellier. the title. Okay. Hellier. Check yeah, check it out. I mean, I will. Uh, yep, it was done by uh, Greg and Dana Newkirk. 
it was very interesting to me. Um, and, 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 you know, going back to my, to my cavern, cave, underground cave uh, thing, uh, you know, it, that kind of made sense. You know, if, if we're, we're seeing these, these, these creatures coming out of, or people have witnessed these things coming out of these cave systems or, or coming out of, you know, these caves, it makes sense, you know? So uh, I, I thought it was intriguing to, to me, so. Well, yeah, I, I've, I've often thought that too, that that could be related. There could be some sort of relationship there. And I don't know, because, you know, like we were talking about before, when you're that big uh, and it's daylight, you know, you got to go somewhere. You got right. You right. can't just be standing out in the open saying, look at me, because, you know, the mystery would have been solved a long time ago. Absolutely. I, I, I believe I, I you're I believe that fully because, you know, again, it's one of those things where it's like, well, where do these things reside? Where do they go? Well, mm. it makes sense if, they, if, if they're underground, if they utilize the cave systems. Yeah. To me, it made sense. Uh, now, now, could I be wrong? Absolutely. I, I could be wrong. But I, it but but it does make sense. I mean, well, here's the thing. You can't have any type of any science without a working hypothesis. Mm-hmm. You got to come up with hypotheses. The first hypothesis we all traips into the woods with is, is there a Bigfoot? Right. And then when we get to the point where I do believe there is a Bigfoot. So if a Bigfoot is here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm-hmm. And then you have other branches of hypotheses. So really, uh, you know, you know what you're saying is, is found, and uh, now you just got to crack it. And I like uh, Bear County Bigfoot's motto, which is "Boots on the ground." And yeah. and and of course, Chris knows that I was using that for years. That you know, yeah. you know with boots on the ground investigation, you, always you, beats everything. You influenced that, Steve. Oh, I've been- thank you. I've been fall fo- because I followed you for a while. That, that's where I got this from you. Wow, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, that's what it takes. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> because I, I want people to know I'm not an armchair researcher. I'm out there. I'm out there grinding, man. Any free time I have, I'm out there. You know. And you, so, and, and the funny thing is, and Chris has been witness to this, how many times? Uh, on this channel or in, in a social media post, somebody will say, oh, you're just an armchair researcher. And they're calling me an armchair researcher. They have no idea. Yeah, and that's what I said. <laughs> well, you uh, you must be. I remember somebody put that on Facebook and I left it up because I lambasted. I'm like, oh, you must be a noob. <laughs> I go, yeah. because I have been to 46 and a blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I just went down the whole list. And I said, now, tell me I'm jealous. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, because, coming up next. Yeah, guys, you know what? <laughs> no amount of money can take away the experiences and the fun and the people I've met through this wonderful journey. Yes, yeah. I've met some real shitheads, but yeah, the, the great people, the good people, and a lot of those people over there in our audience tonight are great people that make being in this so worth it. Mm-hmm. And I think that is like now you have a team, I, I assume. No, it's just no. me and my wife. Oh, right. Excellent. That's a well, team. That's like, a team. That, that's a, yeah. And you know what? That's I, that's a that's a good thing. I keep it that way, Steve, because not and not that in the future I would not have want to add one other person, but I have to trust that person. Right. That's the thing. And 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 I, I don't want to be liable for somebody that may have uh, some type of ailment that I don't know about. They don't, they, they don't disclose and then we're out there and something happens. God forbid, I would not want somebody, somebody to hurt or, or, or worse. So yeah. I, 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 get that. I, I, I get keep that. it just with me and my wife, you know, you know and that, but that, but that is awesome because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I was, uh, I'm married, but uh, it took me, 14 years to get remarried mm-hmm. a long time 14 10 17 no for yeah 14 years to get remarried it's very hard when you do not have the support of a significant other it's very hard my wife is my biggest cheerleader man and, and there is so much truth to behind every good man there's a good woman so absolutely much absolutely that. Absolutely. 
And uh, so tell me, you know, and uh, this is uh, see, this is the way the show rolls. Sometimes it goes off into these weird turns. But so tell me what value it is to you to have your significant other on your team. Uh, it means it, it, it means everything to me um, uh, because I know what it's like to not have that support from uh, somebody that you have poured yourself into for years and years. Right. Um, I was married before. Uh, and, you know, my wife, you know, she's uh, she's big. This is what I did in the beginning. I said, you know what? I'm going to show her this up front first. And if she yep. if she runs off, well, then she's not the one, I guess, you know, but she embraced it. She embraced it. And, and she is all about and she And she'll even tell me, look, you need to get out there. You need it. Look, don't quit. Hey, don't don't be sitting on the couch. We need, we need to get out there. You, you, we need to get, and she's the driving force. She really, when I'm, when I'm down and I feel like, you know, I'm just kind of being aloof and, you know, I'm being lazy. She's like, Rod, let's go. Come on, let's get out there. And I'm like, Whoa, you know, she's the driving force. And, and had, had it not been for her, I don't think we would have found a lot of stuff that we would, we would have found because she's, she's encouraging. She's, she's getting me, uh, she's motivating me, you know, so, you know, uh, behind uh, every man is a good woman. And, and, yeah. and I give her all the credit in the world because I don't think I would have any of this stuff or any of the documentation I have now, which I'm, I'm not saying like I'm this grand, you know, uh, researcher. Right. But but it, it, it makes sense. You know, you got to have everybody needs somebody in their life to encourage and 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 get them motivated. You know, and my wife is that person and, and and I give her all the credit in the world, man. She's 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 that to me. She's great. Yeah. Got absolutely. A good <laughs> I do. I do. Yes, sir. I I, do. Finding a track waste. I I'm pretty sure I was yelling my motto to the Florida mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean it, I, to me, you just gotta have that. And you know, if you're self motivated, God bless you, man. That's great. You know, but sometimes, you know, as a man, you you need that other half. That's people, important. People do did not understand that. You know, for the first seven years of doing this, uh, I mean, from actually nine years of doing this from '98 to 2007, I never had the backing of a significant other. Never zip. Hmm. But I muddled through. I started a podcast. I, I still did it. Still. Yeah. still. Ah. You had the drive. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, I'm really a lucky man now because my, my wife is like, when are we going out? When are we going out? When are we going out? Um, yeah. There's Mike Freeman. So, hi, I was married. Uh, that's our good friend, Mike Freeman. Yeah. Uh, son of uh, Paul Freeman. Yep. And uh, he says, I was married to my wife before she even knew who my dad was or anything about big. But, and, and my God, she married you. That, that <laughs> And she stayed married to you. That's that's amazing. <laughs> Michael's a real one, man. He's a yes. real one. Well, He's it's good. Kid. It's good to have that support at home. And it's really important. You know, my, my wife supports me 100 percent, but she doesn't want to see a Bigfoot. <laughs> she she knows you know that these things are out there from, from no nope, i don't see it no nope. she, uh, she don't uh, want to nope, see uh, it uh, no don't want to go yeah yeah but we had this discussion earlier today and i'm glad this came up because we had this discussion earlier today i said well come on let's go it's time to go because we were going to go out and trekking which we we did but uh she said well why don't you take uh andy with it that's my son my youngest son she said, why don't you take Andy? Well, why do you want to take me for? I said, she said, why do you need me to go? I said, bait. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot bait. Yeah. You Get know, out there. I, yeah, you, you know, know I, I will say this too. Apparently, you know how, you know, she said, you know, your wife doesn't want to see a Bigfoot. I guess here's here's a cheap shot. I guess needed is Kelly Shaw. Oh. <laughs> 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 Uh, on Tuesday. Sorry, I had to do that. Had to. My wife is the one that would go chasing after that creature. She, I, in oh. fact, no, no, she's. <laughs> I'm the I'm the guy that's going. No, no, come on, let's let's let's. No, you. She she's uh, 
she's she's tough as nails, man. <laughs> she's not phased by a lot of things. Um, so yeah, she's. I think it's it's great, and 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 when mine goes, I have to. Give her, I always. I know she's probably getting tired of hearing it, but I'm telling. I always have to tell her if we see one or if we're walking through here and one steps out from behind a tree, don't scream. <laughs> don't scream just just stand there say nothing don't look at it just just don't scream you know don't don't do make anything. eye contact don't make you, you know, know i i i just made that little noise <laughs> and, 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 and and i woke the office assistant up he's now looking at me like uh oh <laughs> sorry go back go back to sleep it's okay really <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> now it's time for another treat, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, there he goes. I, I thought I had a Shih Tzu and said I got a Chow Hound. <laughs> <laughs> pay the cheese tax. The oh, cheese. I had to pay that. I made, I made grilled cheese the other day for lunch and I had to pay the cheese tax. Yep. Oh, man. No yeah. good. Soon as they hear that cheese wrapper, both of them, the Shih Tzu and the Shepherd, yeah. they're like, Rufus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I try to give the, the, the cat ah. here, uh, we tried to give the cat here tilapia, some fish. And nope. uh, she, she wouldn't have it. She wouldn't have none of it. And uh, I was like, well, maybe if it was salmon, I don't know. Okay. So we do have a question from Ural C. Uriel, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for asking the question. Have there been Bigfoot reports from Yosemite National Park? Well, none that I know off the top of my head, but I'm sure there probably has been one or two, mm -hmm. throughout, you know, throughout the years. Mm -hmm. um, one would think that in such a rich, you know, forested area and uh, with so much game, I mean, one of the few areas where you do actually have grizzly bear in the United States. Is that little swath in Wyoming that where Yosemite is, mm -hmm. and in and in western Montana, um, grizzlies are not common to Oregon. They're not common to most of Washington State. Um, they do get an occasional one, but that's it for grizzlies. You know, people think they go to Colorado. Oh, there might be a grizzly. Nope, they're 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 north. Mm -hmm. um, no. When we went to uh, to see uh, oh, oh. Old, old Faithful, the geyser, uh, I didn't see any Bigfoot there either. <laughs> that don't mean there isn't any. Ah, here's, here's a good question. Rod, what, yeah. what's your opinion on the general disposition of Sasquatch in Texas? Aggressive, timid, you know, a little, ga a little gassy perhaps? Uh, <laughs> many of the plausible encounters that I've read about down there depicted aggressive behavior aggressive aggressive um that's uh, that's a, that's exactly what i hear uh that's coming from uh, a couple of people um that have experienced some aggressive behavior now now this is uh coming from east texas we're talking about the sam houston national mm. uh, forest uh where there have been numerous sightings and encounters i think a lot of, of researchers have gone through that area from uh, from other states as well they they kind of go out there and um, they experience some some very aggressive behavior, uh, rock throwing. Um, I, I I had heard uh, of an encounter from a gentleman that had uh, these things. His 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 dad's property was uh, up against that uh, national forest, and uh, and maybe you would maybe you'd heard this episode, Steve. This is on Sasquatch Chronicles. This, this gentleman had had, um, you know, he had took a shot at one of these things. And I oh, think, oh, hang, hang on a second there. Mm -hmm. uh... <laughs> ah, the Sasquatch Chronicles again strikes. There you go. So I had, I, so I had heard this encounter, and I and um, then this is other other uh, encounters as well that from that area as well so you know i've i've heard of people having aggressive encounters with that um particular area so that i think the 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 jury is out that these things uh in texas i think are are more aggressive 
than 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 your quote forest friends. I don't know. Now, yeah. Now, why do you think that is? Do you have any ideas or you're just a uh, wild guess? Uh, I, I still think if you're if you're an eight foot biped covered in hair and you're in humidity, that's just crazy. Um, I'd be pissed off too. Yeah, I, I would tend to think that that would make you yeah. look cranky. Yeah, I I would think so. I, I would not be happy. Um, or you know, hey, um, maybe that's just by nature. I, I think that uh, we do have. Uh, I think we do have different types. I think there's different. Um, uh, personalities or, you know, what have you, um, uh, of these creatures, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I, and, and again, but this is based off of just encounters that I've heard from, from people talking about what they saw and what they experienced, uh, in, in East Texas. Uh, and then, you know, a little bit further closer to where I'm at as well. Uh, tackle asks, have you guys heard of any big reports on Fort Knox? Uh, I have not. Just uh, yeah, one recently on Charlie Raymond's site. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. About uh, oh gosh, about three weeks ago now, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, what's your advice for being in areas with aggressive reports? Not like Texas, but um, you know, my advice would would be you know, uh, you know, business as usual. Um, because the, the likelihood of an actual, when they say aggressive, that means they're going to be a little more cantankerous or, or less timid than your normal Sasquatch. They may not attack you, but they're going to display a little bit more because they just don't want to be bothered. It's too warm, perhaps. Sure. Um, and then, uh, Texas, uh, Mike, well, the Mike, how are you? He says, I investigated an aggressive report. Steve was at the conference when we showed and edited down video. Yes, absolutely. That was very interesting. Um, so, yeah, uh, they, they do. I mean, if you look at the Bobby Ford incident in Falk, Arkansas, that was a very aggressive behavior by those Sasquatch, being very bold and, mm. and uh, you know, reaching into the windows and walking on the porches. And then Bobby yeah. Ford running out and then, you know, bumping mm -hmm. into one. And that was it. He was traumatized from that. So. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they were not afraid and they were a little bit cantankerous. I do have a friend that, um, you know, before I had disclosed any of the uh, research or, you know, um, what I do, basically, um, she had mentioned that uh, there was uh, some instances where or some situations where uh, her parents live on an older piece of property that is uh, part of a tributary of the Salado Creek. It has uh, a spring water that runs through it. There's plenty of white-tailed deer and um, they live on a piece of property that's, you know, got two older houses that are on pier and beam. So they're, they're tall, you know, pier and beam houses right. are very tall. And, um, you know, this is before I disclose anything that I, that I, that I do. And she said, my, my two boys, we moved in this house. My two boys were scared, scared to, to sleep in their room. And we're talking about eight, nine year old uh, little boys. And um, they would run into my room and and say, you know, hey, you know, there's somebody looking in our window. It's a it's tall and it's dark. We, we it is scary, right? And and the first time she said, okay, yeah, come and sleep with me. It's fine, it's fine. You know, two and three and four times she's like, hey, look, you guys got to start sleeping in your own room. Like, the, you know, she she thinks that they're making it up that they're just they just want to go sleep with mom and and yeah. be close to mom, right? And so uh, they, they describe this creature as, or this part, they said, quote, it was a tall, big black man that's standing and looking in our window. Mm. And she was like, I, I don't know what it was or, or who it was. And she thought, this is private property. Why, you know, we, we, don't, we don't have anybody just traipsing around and come to find out this, this the window, of course, being pier and bean, we're talking maybe seven, eight foot up with right. this window, right? So, you know, we're talking about a very tall, big person uh, that is looking in their, in their in the window. So she went ahead and put some drapes, and that seemed to help a little bit. And then she told me at one point in time that there was a uh, – she was in the kitchen cooking, and she felt like – like, it felt like a, a freight train just hit my, hit my side of my house. Boom. And almost sh pretty much shook the house, right? Mm -hmm. Went out to go see what it was. Couldn't, di didn't see anything. 
Another instance where she was cooking again, and she had the, uh, I guess the back door is close to the kitchen, and she had smelt this uh, smell that was terrible. She's like, it was bad. And again, went outside to investigate what the heck this smell was, and it was gone. Whatever the smell was, it's left. You know, so, you know, and, and then after that, I was like, well, that sounds a classic uh, behavior uh, from what yes. I from what I know. Mm -hmm. And soon after that, and, uh, you know, I like to think that I did something good because she was like, I, we got to get out. Like, I got to get an apartment in the city and, and be out. And that's then that's what she did. And, you know. So I had asked if I could get out on that property and then see if I could investigate, but you know, the, the parents just weren't really into it and right. didn't, didn't want me there. So, but you know, I found that very interesting and I thought that was just classic, classic behavior. Right. Uh, and of the, these creatures. A lot of reports from Alabama mentioned uh, the creatures hitting the side of the house too. Or slapping the side of the house. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Window peeking. That's, that's a mm -hmm. thing, yeah. you know, um, now the smell I, I I hear from you know from I think it's person to person. Some people don't smell uh, that that have that smell, and then you know they encounter the creature. They didn't smell anything, or they they have that smell and they encounter the creature. Right. You know, so. uh, yeah, you know, in in my experience, the two I did see, I did mm -hmm. not smell. Right. But the one I go. heard, the one I heard walk around us, and we ended up getting the four day cast the track way of it. Um we smelled that guy and like bang, bang, it was there and it left. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was very distinct. I mean, I was a paramedic. I've been to death scenes before and I've been in houses where people have been dead for a couple of weeks. And, uh, you yeah, know what that smells like. I, and the smell of these things far worse, yeah. far worse. Hmm. If you can believe that. Uh, death, skunk, musk, wet right. dog, all roll garbage, yeah. all rolled up into one. We got to say it in Kentucky. You would gag a maggot. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I, I one thing I started doing was deploying um, audio recorders um, in in a couple of areas, um, and I'm I'm still kind of it's it's hours and hours of audio, which you know how that is. It's tedious. You got to sit right. there and just listen to yeah. stuff. And um, one of the it, it's on my Instagram. If you want to take take a, a listen sure to right. it. It's um, Bear, you know, Bear County Bigfoot. I've got, and I you have to have some some you know uh, headphones on to really hear uh, what what I got what I captured, and um, I felt like this area was active, so I hid this audio recorder in a tree stump, and I covered it up a little bit and mm. sifted through some of the audio, and some of it was really intriguing. One thing I think to notate was that you know when I heard the footsteps coming, uh, what I believe by, by biped footsteps, um, one thing to notate was that the, the area was quiet when dead silent, not even the crickets were, 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 were heard nothing. It was dead silent. And then you hear footsteps. Uh, and the, what I captured was, uh, around, I think, um, maybe about the two or three hours in, uh, from where I had, when I had deployed the, the, uh, the audio recorder. Right. And, um, I heard what I heard was just a ooh, 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 type of, type of, uh, uh, so, vocal. so I'll, I'll say this. If you want to send me, yeah, you know, the isolated file, I can amplify those for you. I would love to, I would love yep. to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Me, That'd be um, awesome. You know, and uh, even this, this is one I amplified, but I didn't have to amplify it too much. But uh, last September, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have a repeat performance this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we got this up in my research area, number one. It's very brief. Wow. And um, that's that's that, amazing. That definitely was. And it only did. Wow. It and it only did it once. Hmm. And that was it. The rest of the night was relatively quiet. Um, so wow. I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting for mid-April, which we're almost there. And that's when they usually open the roads up to my research area. And then wow. it's back up there to, at night to 
you know, well, I, I go up in the day first because I got to make sure the roads are good. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they're good, then I'll go back up there at night and start. Uh, the grasshopper enjoying. made a good point here. He said nobody yes. checks the wind direction when they get hit by the smell. Hmm. True. Yeah. Well, that night uh, it was very windy. So that uh, that was. Um, so we got two more questions. We'll take Nick's question sure. first. Are there any reports of Sasquatch heading south of the border or activity in, in northern Mexico? It's it's not that I have heard of personally, but it, but it's possible because uh, I, there are some um, some accounts that I have heard of that were further south, closer to the Gulf Coast, uh, um, Kingsville, Corpus Christi, and and those areas there. So I I I don't. Um, I don't doubt that there may be something, some type of activity uh, going on uh, south of the border, northern Mexico. Personally, I think that Sasquatch do not get along with the Chupacabras in Mexico. So we may have a, <laughs> that could be, they, oh, that, well, that sounds they, like a new movie, man. The, the they, war of the Sasquatch. They, they, in the they probably even world. get along less with the cartels. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably being weaponized as we speak. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> War between the Sasquatch and the Chupacabras. Could happen. Um, Who knows? <laughs> so Tom Connolly asked me, what's my take on 411? Yeah. And uh, my take on it is very simple. As a professional investigator of 35 years, mm -hmm. I've investigated all sorts of different malarkey crimes, uh, missing persons, um, I, like I said, I've, I've had an arson investigation that led into a murder scene, uh, which is really a, a unique case. Um, I've done a few cold case things. Um, and what I see on 411, most of the time, like 99% of the time, can be explained by very physical things such as hypothermia, mm. such as, you know, uh, somebody not being prepared getting lost in the forest and end up, you know, perhaps hurting themselves or falling down a gully or perhaps having a medical incident. And just because they haven't found their body um, does not mean anything supernatural or out of uh, uh, the normal realm has occurred. It just simply means the person is missing. And I think it's kind of presumptuous and from what I understand uh, from folks that are, uh, especially with the, um, can't think of the guy's name, but he went missing up in Lily Pond. Tom, uh, uh, I'll yeah. think of it. Um, uh, there's a film crew that's doing a documentary about that. And a lot of the people were reluctant to come forward and give their accounts because of the taste that was left behind in their mouth from the 411 pr production. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot right there. Mm -hmm. um, and since that particular area is very close to home where I live, it's only a county over. I live in Washington wow. County, uh, you know, and if you just go northeast, we also border Warren County as well. Mm -hmm. um, we border uh, Washington County borders Vermont to our east, and it borders Saratoga County and Warren County to the north. And um, and uh, or I should say to the uh, to the west and to the north we have Essex County. That's uh, so. Uh, but Warren County, we do border Warren County. It's maybe an hour away from where I live, where uh, the gentleman went missing. And like I said, a lot of the people had a really bad taste in their mouth from that production because they only seem to be focusing on you know some of the quirky stuff, but not some of the you know, real logistical stuff. Hmm. So that, you know, again, you know, it's all about Hollywood. It's all about TV. It's all about keeping the viewer hooked. Yeah. Right. Uh, they didn't have a list of the names. Of the right. Uh, they also, they also covered a guy that went missing right across the river here, not two miles from where I live. Hmm. And they covered him on the same episode. Mm -hmm. And the fact was the guy was a politician in Saratoga County. Oh, wow. So, and oh! 
Texas Bigfoot wow. Rangers. Good Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 49.99. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Wow. Very generous. Thank you so much, Mike. Mike is one of our, our biggest supporters, and I really appreciate him. And I got to get my Very ass nice. back down. I got to get my ass back down to Jefferson. And, uh, yeah. To see the I'll, gang for the, for the Texas Bigfoot Conference. because I'll be there in October. And uh, unfortunately, I think the uh, what, what day? Oh, what day in October is it this year? It's like the ah, God, you you got yeah. yeah. I have to, I have to I, look at my calendar. <laughs> I, I may actually be available. I, I mean, I'll see if I can get down there and come as a spectator this year. I know Doctor Haskell Hart is going to be there this year, mm. and that's going to be a great uh, a, a great event. You know, Doctor Hart's awesome. Um, and uh, I'm sure Shelly. Uh, 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 Shelly Covington Montana is going to be there. She's awesome as well. Mike, of course. Uh, I wonder how his new uh, Bigfoot rig's going. Um, his old one, we had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> we, we were call blasting. He was call blasting people as they were walking by the truck in the middle of downtown Jefferson. Oh. Of my like, oh, <laughs> and then, of course, we got yelled at, but that's who. <gasps> Jermac 10. I will. Uh, that's it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, uh, Thank you. Uh, Craig, uh, Craig has been really uh, gracious and uh, he's been really, he's, he's a member of, of my group as well um, on Facebook nice. and, and um, he's been very nice and uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of, I'm, I'm going to be a vendor, uh, you know, so I, I'll, I'll be but, there in October <clears throat> as well. So. What I love is, and I like seeing that, is that, you know, a lot of you Texas guys all kind of know each other and nobody's really too much bumping heads. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I, I you know, I, you know, I, I understand people come from different walks of life. There's, you know, different outlooks and different things. And, and I, I hear everybody out. I really do. And I, I, I try not to pass any judgment only because, you know, I'm, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not an expert. Right. So uh, I, I really try to hear everybody out and, you know, Hey, whether if it's really crazy or what, fine, let, let me hear you tell me what what you got. And, yeah, you know, and, and then that's, that's where I leave it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I always try to talk people off the edge on some things. Sure. And, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes you have to do that. Like, you, you want to be the voice of reason. I think, right. Guys like you, we we need people like you, in in, in what we do um, because we need to have some reasoning. We need to have some uh, Occam's razor, right? So it makes but we, sense. But we also need to be compassionate about it. Absolutely. I, I remember Absolutely. one. Of, uh, her name is uh, Cookie Stringfellow, and I remember having a conversation with her several years ago. And I was at a, a paranormal conference, and I had my Bigfoot stuff and. She was uh, had her UFO stuff up, and she was a very firm believer in, you know, Bigfoot and UFOs being all one and the same. And I right. sat there and I listened to her, and I said, "Well, you know," and I, I started giving her some of my thoughts. And at the end of the discussion, which really told me I was going in the right direction, was she goes, "You know, I want to thank you. You may not agree with me, and you've kind of given me uh, quite a bit of things to think about." But you listen to me, and I appreciate that you didn't cut me off, right? And, and that's you know, that's the uh, what I try not to do sometimes is cut people off. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I try. Sometimes it comes right at me. Ah, wait, hold on. Well, but, and I think part of that too is just because of what you've done as a career for so long that your your instincts kick in. You know, you 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 see the red flags. You hear it. But and, you know, ev everybody in this field can can get the same tools. They can get the sure. same vibes. They can, as they do yeah. it more and more, they talk to more yeah. and more people. Yeah. You know, and, and if they just follow the prescribed methodology of just going in there uh, with no biases at all, let me forget that I've had a right. bigfoot, uh, bigfoot sightings. Let me forget that. You know, I, I believe Bigfoot is this. Let me forget about that. There's 10 gazillion hoaxers out there. Let yeah. me just hear this person out. It is what it is. And we'll take it from there. And we go step by step. And every case 
it's the same process. Right. And that's, that's crucial. Yeah. And, and if one thing I, I try to teach people is again, and of course I'm preaching to the choir here is when there's a picture or video come out. Okay. That looks interesting. Forget about it. see it once and forget about it. Now look at the story and concentrate on the story because mm -hmm. Unless it's CGI, where you're going to get some actual objective evidence saying, hey, look, this is where, you know, you notice the figures in front of the rock, not behind the Independence Day footage, for example. Right. There's right. a part where, it, oh, it's running with the baby. And there's a portion where actually the Bigfoot's waist pops in front for two frames in front of the rock and then disappears back and, and behind the rock again. And, um, you know, it's, it was obviously did not move naturally and obviously it was, it was cgi hmm. um but you got to concentrate on the story and the story there was no story so that that puts the whole thing right there in the trash can if there's no story in a film or video or anything like that if you can say when did this happen where did mm -hmm. this happen who filmed this at least at least by a screen name mm -hmm. if you can't reference the actual source of the video it's it's garbage it's not worth it it's nothing right right and, you, uh, I think the other thing too is that I get a lot of pushback on, well, you know, this Sasquatch surely won't go where people are, and 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 because a lot of my trace evidence is close to suburban areas. Well, it's 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 off of a creek greenway. You know, I I there's numerous sure. encounters of people encounter these things. You know, around their neighborhoods. And, and lo and behold, there's a, a creek or a greenway or or a patch of woods that are, uh, you know, a micro forest where the area makes sense. There's passage in and out of that area. Right. Yeah. There's, and, and I think people put this 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 creature in, in this. And if it doesn't fit inside of this, no, there's no way. Well, right. you know, I, I don't know. There I, are I, there know? are there can be instances where. Sure especially at night uh, when everybody's inside. And, you know, if you ever step outside of your house, even in a rural area, like I live, I live in a, in a, in a suburban area, I live in a park, mm -hmm. but you can step out during the day and you can hear the din of the day's activities. Mm -hmm. But at nighttime you step out, it's silent. Yeah. You know, and that, that, that's, you can feel that, temporal shift in the busyness of the area the din um the, the sound waves and they emanate from the cities and they emanate from the neighborhoods mm -hmm. and uh, the roadways of the uh, traffic going by back and forth and then when it's not there and this is this is the time when these creatures roam and sure. yes i i have investigated very successfully even though the sighting was back in the, the 1980s mm -hmm. um there was a sighting in Waterford, New York, where four boys had seen what they claimed was a Bigfoot. Sandy Brown, and it walked into the, a wooded area behind a cemetery. Mm -hmm. And that whole area at the time was very forested, wasn't very developed. The police were said they called the police. That's how concerned they were. These kids called the cops. Now, if they wow. were faking it, they wouldn't have called the cops, number one. Number two... Um, you know, the cops showed up and they kind of, uh, the, the actual sergeant showed up and he made a very a serious attempt. They said they found a dead muskrat or something. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of the report. Um, but they had seen something. I actually corresponded with one of the kids at the time and agreed. Yeah, it was, it, it was there. You know, what can I say? It, you know, it was, it stood about mm -hmm. this tall and it mm -hmm. went the wood line and, my friend so and so and my friend so and so was there because when I got I I freedom, I actually found the article. I was looking through the John Green archives, mm -hmm. and it referenced the article. So I went to the article. I got the newspaper article, and from there, I got the details. And then I freedom of information requested the police department of the report, and I actually got this thirty. At the time, it was <coughs> thirty thirty some odd years. And I got this report, um, which was amazing. Whoop. There you are, um, which was completely amazing um, to get a 30-year-old Bigfoot report. And there it is in front of you. And they didn't redact the names. 
which I found really amazing too. And uh, I, I think the big reason why was because the kids are no longer there. Uh, yes. Chris, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. I'm out of Rod. Can you hear me, bud? Hello. Oh. Rod, you might have to step back out and come back in or check your audio settings. Uh, I can hear you just fine, but he can't hear us, I think. Uh, Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear us? Can you hear us talking, Rod? Okay. Hello? Check one, two. Check, check. Come in, Houston. Or actually, come in San Antonio. Oh, there's this. Go, Go out and Hello. come back. I hope he can read my chicken scratches here. Uh oh, wait a minute. Oh, can't hear y'all. <laughs> Can you see that, Steve? Uh, <laughs> okay, you can hear me. I can't yes. hear y'all. Okay. I don't know what happened. Very weird. Sorry, guys. Uh, Rod, go out and come Hello? back in. Can you hear me uh, now, bud? Weird. Uh, I think he can't see us on the screen there. Maybe he'll go out and come back in. All oh. right, what, about, what about now? Can you, you hear us okay. now? All right. All right. There we are. Yeah. Uh, Good. Modern technology at its best. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It, it's great. No, <laughs> Sorry about it, that. It's great when it works. It's okay. I, I blame Skinny Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. Um, but, uh, usually, and usually they happen towards the beginning of the show, not towards <laughs> the end of the show. So yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Then Steve um, will be talking and having a good time right before the show. Then the show will start. Then I'll nothing works. Right. <laughs> but but you know, just so people know out there in, in, in our audience, um, you know, feel free if there was a Bigfoot report that you know happened and the police responded. You, you know, and the, the obviously these things get closed down pretty fast. You're entitled to freedom of information request. The report, the 911 call, any photographs taken, any type of evidence, evidentiary pictures that were taken. As long as the case is closed, you're entitled to it and you can do it by a Freedom of Information Act. And, 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 the, re, and the reason how you do it is just go to the police department website, look at the records department, and usually there's something about a FOIL or a FOIA request. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll see a FOIL request, Freedom of Information Law. That. Or a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act. You fill out the form, you mail it in, they'll tell you how much it's going to cost you. It could cost you anywhere from a 10 cents to 25 cents per page for a report, and then a set price for any media, maybe $20 for a recording and stuff like that. It's not bad. Yep. So you can you can get that information really easy. And uh hell, it probably makes some good content. <laughs> no, know, I, I kind of think yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it, it, um, so, uh, but just to my amazement to get a 30 year old police report, like, mm. wow, there it is. Yeah. And now I know who the investigating officer was and in the kid's case, it was a Sergeant. Um, and, uh, where it was, what was the location, what was seen, who was involved, where they lived, all that stuff. Yeah. And, and it was really friggin' cool. Um, so I think that's a great tool to use. So, folks out there, if you're interested in some older reports and, uh, you know, the police were involved, you know, um, it's also a good tool for determining, you know, uh, BS going on, too. Uh, yeah. I remember Lin Linda Newton Perry's uh, from Bigfoot Valley, who her first attempt was trying to say people aren't reporting Bigfoot sightings because their li driver's licenses are being taken away from in Oklahoma or uh, Oregon, rather. Oregon, yeah. Yeah. And uh, actually, it was David Polites who wrote. The Oregon DMV and the DMV is like what? No, we we that, we don't base any criteria on that. We, we have no idea, you know, where this came, came from. Oh, I can tell you where it came from. It came from Linda Newton Perry. 
Well, that would be something else that they had to put, a, put that on the driver's test. Have you seen Bigfoot? And if you put down there, yes, well, oh, you flunked. That's it. No license <laughs> for you, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> weird, weird, weird. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and of course, we, we, we have to ask Eric for his word. Uh, you know, I always love when we, uh, somebody I'll mention, you know, alternate universes and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. As we have the the famous, famous yes. Eric quote. Might even have a parallel universe where, where Tom Biscardi is honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't remember, but I think I was listening to that show. I believe it was the one that uh, Eric Beckchard was on. Uh, yeah. well, more than once, though. He had him more than once. He was on twice, and and the second time I had Eric, uh, or not Eric, I had uh, Sean Forker, Forchop on. Forker, yep. And and Forker got Eric so frustrated. He was the first and only person I ever knew that that Eric decided to quit, hung up, and didn't come back on for the rest of the show. Oh, which, um, and then we we've only had one. You know, out of all our guests, you know, we've had, I think in. In, uh, we're almost out of time here anyway, but I think in all the shows we've done over the oh. years, Chris, is uh, I think we've only had three instances where we had, uh, and the minor one was Eric leaving because we still had Sean on to, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had the incident with a particular Ohio researcher that came on, uh, not with all her facilities. Right, right. And then we had uh, a... Uh, uh, a show where we had somebody continuously lie and I booted him yeah. because he got out under false circumstances. And right. I decided, okay. And we let it go on for about, and we were doing an hour show at the time. And at the 35 minute mark, I, I had enough. And I said, I'm sick of hearing this guy's lies. Boom. Mm. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, because I had Chris come on and dispute what he was saying, I had Matt Knapp come on from Bigfoot Crossroads come on and, and, and say, wait, 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 you're you're wrong, Bob. You're wrong. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> and then the boot, I had the police report. And, you know, he was trying to say, oh, we felt like we were being threatened and we were fearing for our lives. I go, really? He goes, well, were you there? I said, no, but I have the police report. And it doesn't say you were in fear of your lives on anywhere in the police report. It's kind and of he an didn't, extreme, I think. And he <laughs> did not know what to say at all mm -hmm. after that. Mm. The story had a little bit added on to it to make it juicier. It sound, uh, sound like, uh, and trying to make them sound like the victims when they really yeah. weren't the victims. And that was, mm. that was actually over the Bigfoot body oaks. Mm. And uh, yeah, one of the interesting archive somewhere. I got to find the archive of that show. I know I have it somewhere. I got to find it. I looked, I, I looked on. Uh, on well, no, I, I, I have, a, I'm sure I have a physical copy of it somewhere. Well, Oh, that would be great. I wish you could get that and put that on YouTube. It, that yeah. would be worthy of, of, you know, saving, preserving, because yeah. I've looked on blog talk for the old, the Becker shows and stuff before, and they're just, they're gone. They're not yeah. And even a lot of the other shows we have. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> like we, there's a span of shows from 2010 to 2019. Yeah. And you can't even get any of those. They just go to a blank player. So it's like all the, all the media we had there had been has been wiped. And thank goodness I did save some of the shows that we had and migrated them to the YouTube channel. But anyway, it is 1055, so we might as well wrap up. And Rod, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. Yes. It's been yeah. a most enlightening, eye-opening uh, um, thing about, you know, I, I did not realize, you know, uh, the extent of stuff that goes on down in that, that particular area in Bear County. Yes, sir. Um, yep. Uh, Texas and uh, it's awesome and you know if I can make it down to Jefferson in uh, October uh, I'll see you there but yeah, if not absolutely. If, if not you'll probably see me there the year after so <laughs> sounds um, good to me man but uh, <laughs> anyway any final thoughts for your folks out there and how can people get a hold of you so on I'm on I'm all, all the major socials uh, TikTok it's Bear County Bigfoot just uh, you know Specs are County, it's like with the X, right? Um, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook. I have a private group, but you can find us if you search. 
Uh, I keep it private only because uh, I try to, uh, you know, we've got so many trolls out there that just want to start chaos and stir up, you know, drama. I really try to protect uh, a lot of my members, you know, from that. If I can absorb, you know, all the the, the craziness, then I'll take it on myself. And, you know, so, but if you are uh, on Facebook, you can find us there as well. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel as well. As well. I'm sorry, uh, Bear County Bigfoot. So if you would like to follow me there, I've got a number of videos you can check out. So um, it would be great if you can subscribe and uh, uh, check me out. So, yep. Very cool. Very cool. And yeah. uh, on behalf of me, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, I thank like you. Your- I, I, you know, you're one of the honest guys out there doing the job, doing the, doing the field work, boots on the ground. Thank you. And, and I appreciate that. And, Thank uh, you. you know, you are, uh, you are the future of this. So, Thank uh, you, way, you Thank know, you. I love, the, I love the fact that Rod's putting his mind to work and coming up with working theories. You know, why are they doing it? You're not just <laughs> right. seeing it and saying, oh, look right. at that. He's saying, right. why are they doing this? And right. why, yeah. why would they, you know? Love and one that. thing I try, and one thing I tell everybody is that I don't, I'm not claim, claim to have all the answers. I'm, I'm not the the Messiah of of the Bigfoot researchers here. I'm nobody not. is. <laughs> uh, nobody is exactly. No, and, and and nobody can tell me that that they are. Right. I, I, I'm just another person, just searching for the truth. That's it. That's where I leave it. Can't ask so, anything better. Okay, Chris, yeah. do your thing. Well, again, Rod, thank you for coming on on with us. It was a pleasure having you. Great discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, always, it, I want you to come back soon too. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, I would love absolutely. to. And I, would I want to thank, you. thank all you. all of our listeners over there in the chat. We appreciate you guys. What a great bunch of questions we had tonight. Wow, I just, I just can't believe it. we got the best audience in big footing bar none. We appreciate you guys. And thank if you. it's the first time thank watching, you. yeah, go ahead, see. And I want to thank Jay Fritz for gifting five uh, memberships tonight. And I want to give a big thanks out to Mike, Texas Bigfoot Rangers. Exactly. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate each and every one of you. And if anybody was new (laughs) here tonight, and I saw a few, (laughs) if you hadn't subscribed to the channel, go ahead, hit the the subscribe button. If you liked the episode, you know, punch a like, you know, uh, share it out if you can and, and help us out. Because we don't do this, uh, you know, promotion crap and all that. You know, we're just word of mouth. And all you guys on the podcast, hey, we're thinking about you too. <laughs> Stop by the YouTube channel and check out some of the videos. Yeah, and if you haven't hit that notification bell, yeah. ring the bell. Uh, <laughs> as uh, Chef Jean Pierre, who I one of the YouTube channels I follow, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's always like, don't forget to ring the bell. Ring the bell. Uh, I love that guy. He's funny. He's insane. And hey, uh, Snowman Dave. Hello, Snowman Dave. Good to see you. Uh, and, and, and don't forget, we want to thank the platypus jokes as well. <laughs> but anyway, folks. Uh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before we go, we missed the platypus joke. Wait a minute. I know there's one in here. I know we're coming down to the last second, but hang on. Yeah, yeah. Something about falling flat. There it is. Yeah. There's tales of platypus making wood structures, but they all fell flat. <laughs> Good one. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> all right, folks. So, on behalf of all of us, we will see everybody uh, Friday night, 9 Eastern, for the Bigfoot news. And of course, keep your eyes out. Uh, we're going to try to get a, another Squatch Stories out this Thursday. Uh, but Tuesday morning, Tuesday, Tuesday, we're going to have the uh, big, uh, you know, and Don, yes, you can, you can uh, do your little fight card thing. That's fine. Um, but uh, Tuesday, we'll be doing the RMSO takedown. And, uh, you know, Chris has already seen the video. It's done. And uh, what I may do is tomorrow for the members. I'm going to put it up for the members tomorrow. That would be good. Yeah. So the members will get early, early access. Yeah. Early access to it. Um, because it's in the can ready to go. It's just got to be uploaded. And uh, again, much love to you guys out there. 
We'll see you all this Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on Squatch the TV. Everybody, be safe, stay healthy, and of course, God bless and keep on squatching. We thank you for being here with us on Squatch D TV. If you haven't taken the time yet, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And oh yes, hit that notification bell too. We don't want you to miss anything. If you really like our content, you should consider becoming a member. And it's really inexpensive and a great way to support not only the show, but Honest Bigfoot Research. Everyone have a great week. Be safe and God bless. We will see you all here next time on Squatch DTV. Keep on squatching.